information with you today. It's about synergistic divergence. As we all know, synergistic divergence is a rare condition. It is characterized by complete absence of abduction, which is associated with simultaneous abduction of the affected eye and attempted abduction. And this causes affected eye to move further into abduction, complete inside, and resists an extreme divergence of both eyes. Some consider it as weight of four, other consider it part of the congenital fibrosis of the extraocular muscles. However, generally now, these syndromes are included under the term CCDD or congenital cranial disinnervation disorder. The clinical picture mostly presents with large angle exotropia. However, few reported cases were orthotropic in primary position, may be associated with hypotropia, especially in cases of congenital fibrosis, and may be associated with other apparent movements of the extraocular muscles, a synergistic convergence and downshoot production. The ocular associations are uncommon. However, there may be association with ocular albinism and anisocoid. There, uh, the management is quite challenging and often more than one surgery is needed. Uh, whenever there are many options for surgical management, we have to know that neither of them give optimum results. We have either suffered maximal recession, fetonotomy or myectomy, extirpation, denervation, and orbital wall fixation. And according to this report performed by Professor Audain and Dr. Rasha Zidain, published in the Journal of Preto Pre Pre Journal of Ophthalmology in 2017, they found that extirpation and orbital wall fixation gave the best results. The idea came of a new idea of medial transposition of the splat lateral rectus. It was originally described in cases of complete third nerve palsy. Uh, in fact, in the patients with synergistic divergence have abnormal innervation of the lateral rectus instead of the medial rectus on contralateral gaze. And this abnormal innervation to the transposed lateral rectus might result in some adduction on contralateral gaze. This attainment cannot be achieved by other surgical procedures in addition to improvement of exotropia and elimination of synergistic divergence. But of course, we uh, very short or very tight. This technique might not be possible in long standing and very short and tight. The steps will uh, be described in this video. First, we'll do a lumbar uh, conjunctival incision, exploration, or identification of the lateral rectus. Uh, proper dissection here is very important. We have to properly dissect the lateral rectus to free it from the surroundings. Splatting in two halves and suturing each half with 5-0 uh, non-absorbable suture. Then, uh, splitting resume be done very far posterior and lateral rectus to be freely mobile to, to, to be easily transposed medially. Then suturing, passing the upper half underneath the superior rectus and the lower half under the inferior rectus and suturing them six millimeter uh, from the limbus above and below the medial rectus respectively. Uh, this is the first patient. Uh, this patient has large a left exotropia. The eyes fixed in adduction with limitation of adduction. And on attempted adduction, there is synergistic abduction of the left eye. After performing medial transposition of the splat lateral rectus, this is the appearance of the baby, and the ostropia improved. And there is mild improvement in adduction, as we postulated. The alignment in the primary position is acceptable. The baby is very young, photographing that and so And there is slight improvement in adduction. Uh, and this was published in the Journal of American Association of Pediatric Ophthalmology and Strabismus uh, in 2019. Then we met another patient who has bilateral exotropia, the eyes fixed in abduction bilaterally with uh, limitation of adduction and the same synergistic divergence. Uh, I decided this patient was only seven months year old, so uh, the muscle, I thought it will not be that short and tight and will allow medial transposition of the splat lateral rectus, but uh, I was afraid of uh, the results, so I decided to step uh, the surgery in two stages. I performed the right eye first, and this is appearance one week after right medial transposition of splat lateral rectus. I centralized and everything was fine. I was encouraged to do the second eye two weeks later, however, the second eye was small angle isotropia. There was a bed overcorrected two weeks after surgery. Uh, I thought that this small angle have to be addressed early. Then uh, after uh, transpositions, uh, uh, revision is very difficult if we left the patient for a long time. Three weeks after surgery, I decided to do revision of the left eye, but what kind of revision to be done? I didn't know. I just explored the transposed halves and recessed them behind the equator. In a state of 6 millimeters from the medial rectus, I recess them around 10 to 12 millimeters. And this is the appearance after revision of the left eye. The patient is fine. However, six months later, this is the video of the patient. There is still small angle, very small, around 20 present diopters, 15 to 20 present diopters, with improvement in adduction of the right eye. I'm 
left only with one slide. So uh, media transposition of lateral rectus is يعني, a valid option for managing such cases, especially when presenting early in life. Uh, uh, but there is not only the risk of recurrence and under correction, like with other surgical procedures, there's also a risk of over correction. Thank you very much.